Hello, this is a video showing the difference in filter behavior between different sound font and SFZ format samplers. I created these graphs by playing a white noise sample through all synthesizers at different cutoff values, and then I viewed the results in a frequency analyzer. The Y axis shows decibels and the X shows frequency. We'll start off looking at SFZ samplers, Sforzando and SFIZ, or SFIZ, however it's pronounced. And you can see right off the bat that we have a big difference in the filter curves. This is because Sforzando doesn't actually support a cutoff frequency below 50 Hertz. So if I move this graph here to show 50 Hertz, you can see that the filter curves line up pretty identically. Uh, SFIZ, as you can see, goes all the way down to 20. I didn't measure any lower than that. Now, as we continue increasing the cutoff, you can see that the curves stay pretty similar here, but something interesting happens when we get to high cutoff values. We start getting closer to 20,000 hertz. You'll notice Sforzando starts to sag at the high end a little bit. So you can see right now, um, SFIZ is brighter at the higher frequencies right now than Sforzando. And then as we get all the way to 20,000 hertz, those high frequencies sag even more. If I uh, turn the SFIZ graph off, you can really see the amount of sag as I move this back and forth. I'll go back to about 10,000 hertz and then watch the top end of this graph as these high frequencies kind of start to overall sag. This means that even with the filter set at 20,000 hertz in Sforzando, there will be a low pass roll off starting at about 5,000 hertz. And that's about almost 15 decibels of attenuation at the top of that curve, which is noticeable and I might add obnoxious. SFIZ on the other hand has no such issue. And the sound is very bright with a fully open second order low pass filter. Oh, and I should mention all of the filters in these synths are second order or two pole filters. Moving over to the sound font side, uh, we're going to add fluid synth to the graph here. And you're going to see that fluid synth and SFIZ have a very, very similar filter curve, almost identical, with fluid synth's curve having maybe a tiny bit of knee uh, at the cutoff point. So a smoother roll off, which is fantastic for acoustic instruments. Other than that, I would say both Fluid Synth and SFIZ are your ideal representation of a second order low pass filter. And I'm comparing these two, even though they work in different formats, uh, just to be able to show that this is what I would consider the standard for a second order low pass filter. Hiding SFIZ and focusing just on two of your prominent sound font synths, Fluid Synth and Bass MIDI. You can already see an enormous difference at 20 hertz. Uh, this is because bass MIDI does not support lower than 100 hertz cutoff frequency. So I will go ahead and move this up to 100 here. And you will see that at 100, the filters are pretty similar. Uh, once again, fluid synth rounds off a little bit at the cutoff point, uh, more so than bass MIDI or SFIZ. Now something strange is gonna happen here as I increase the frequency with bass MIDI. So initially, these two filters are mostly in lockstep. However, as we get towards a thousand hertz, you'll notice that we have this change to the curvature of the bass MIDI filter. Um, so we have a lot more high frequencies starting to leak into the signal at this point. As I increase the cutoff point, you can see that floor of sound, uh, that slope there, continuing to separate from fluid synth. Now we're at 3000 Hertz here and you can see bass MIDI has a lot more high frequency content that is getting through the filter. And as we increase this, well, at this point we have a huge disparity between the filter characteristics of fluid synth and bass MIDI. In fact, Base MIDI at 7,000 Hertz is almost completely open. And by the time we get to 8,000 Hertz, it is fully open. 
and whereas fluid synth still has quite a roll off. Um, now, the reason for this is that bass MIDI is emulating the behavior of the Sound Blaster line of sound cards, starting with the AWE32, which had a maximum filter value of 8,000 hertz. All of the subsequent cards that Creative Labs released, such as the Live and the Audigy series, also emulated this behavior. So setting the filter between 8,000 hertz and 20,000 hertz makes no difference for the Sound Blaster cards and also for bass MIDI, which emulates this behavior. So if I now add in the Audigy 2, you will see a similar filter curve, although this has a bit of um, emphasis at the cutoff point and also slightly above the cutoff point. Now we have the same issue where both the Audigy and the bass MIDI don't support lower than 100 hertz cutoff. So, but even at 100 hertz, you can see a bit of a spread here in the sonic characteristics of these three filters. Continuing upwards, you will start to see that same leaky filter behavior or whatever you want to call it in the Audigy and Bass MIDI. So Bass MIDI does a good job of emulating the Creative Labs hardware synths. Um, however, this is actually not part of the sound font spec. So I definitely prefer fluid synths behavior here. It is also important to note that Bass MIDI applies the same wonky filter behavior to its SFZ renderer. The only one I haven't gone over is Sobanth. This is another sound font synth, in particular a VSTI, that is fully compliant with the sound font specification, as is Fluid Synth. Bass MIDI uh, does not support all modulators, but is otherwise pretty good in its sound font support. I will compare Sobanth with Fluid Synth, as it is very similar in its filter implementation. Here we go. So pretty lockstep between both synths until we get to the very top. And what you're going to see at the very top is the Sobanth has a hard roll off. So you can just not get those top frequencies like you can with fluid synth. It's possible that the high frequency roll off behavior of Sforzando and Sobanth might change at different sampling rates. I took these measurements at 48 kilohertz. However, if you were to record at 96 kilohertz, for example, it's possible that this roll-off might not happen if the roll-off is a consequence of trying to avoid getting too close to the Nyquist frequency. Uh, but I have not tested that yet. Anyway, I hope this is useful to you sound designers out there. I'll do one last pass through all of these filter values with all of these synths enabled so you can just get a good overview, I guess. Anyway, thanks for watching.